Hey guys, week 37 to 38 of this pregnancy was another really um, interesting one. I had some really special moments this week and got some good confirmation from the midwife about the position of the baby and uh, can't believe that it's getting so close. All right, it's uh, Sunday, April 5th. I'm about to do... Uh, Nox is about to step on a skateboard, so that's terrifying. Um, I'm about to do the street parking vault workout 14, um, this workout, uh, the main version has wall balls running and pull-ups. The shift version has ring rows or some sort of row, air squats, and like a bunch of options for the other part. I'm going to do bike. I'm going to do a uh, barbell in the rack row, but I'm still going to do wall balls with the lower shift reps. Uh, here we go. It's been, um, so workout wise this week, I'm still going. Um, for the most part, I've been doing shift or like some combination of like shift, which is like our modified version of uh, street parking for like beginners or people who are pregnant and things like that. Um, with the regular program, I've kind of just like been making it my own, both for ability and just for my mental state that day. Um, my favorite workout so far this week was the other day, it was just super sunny. And so I went in the little patch of sun in the garage and just, it feels good to get sun on the belly. I feel like he can feel it. I feel like the vitamin D is good for us. And um, when I was pregnant with Knox, I got that a lot because I lived in Southern California and it was summertime. So it felt really good. It was very energizing to just do a little workout. I didn't even put shoes on, just out in the sun. Um, I put a video of it up on my Instagram and some guy, said, you look extremely uncomfortable. And I was like, well, I'm 38 weeks pregnant. <laughs> Find someone that's that pregnant who doesn't look extremely uncomfortable. Um, thank you for your opinion. But it was really nice. It, and the walks have been, it's been sunny. And it's just been so nice to get just warmth and sun. So good times. All right, so it's Monday, April 6th. Um, I just got home from going to the chiropractor. I've still been able to see her once a week. She's opened up for her pregnant patients or people who um, would really have issues if she closed completely, which I'm super grateful for. I was having a lot of a lot of pubic pain last week um, for a couple days, so that's helpful. Uh, and I'm still just gonna see her once a week until he comes. So maybe one, two, or three more times. Um, and right now I'm just on a walk. Um, the chiropractor's kind of far away, so 30 minutes of sitting in my car there and back actually also gives me a lot of pubic bone pain, so I'm just on a little like 800 meter loop. And then for the next like three days, I'm gonna try to get a lot of work done. Um, I know I keep saying that, but I feel like there's been so many random things and distractions, um, appointments or whatever, so that I can take a step back. So it's Monday, it's nice outside, and we're just hanging in there. It's been really sunny and beautiful here this week, so it's hard to just like sit in here and look outside. I've been walking a lot. But I don't know if it's just because I'm so isolated um, that it seems like um, the scariness of the coronavirus stuff has felt less to me. Um, obviously, I know there's still so much going on and it's still growing and I do like look at the news like here and there, not very often. But I haven't had as much anxiety around it and maybe we're all just getting used to it, which is kind of sad, honestly. 
Um, but at some point, it's been a while now, it's been like, you know, three weeks or a month that everybody's been talking about it all day. You just kind of maybe become a little bit more numb to it, especially if you're not seeing it in person. Um, so I have had less anxiety and stuff like that this week. Some things that have impacted me personally that, um, reminded me that this isn't a normal pregnancy, I guess, situation to be in are, um, I was supposed to have a, an appointment here at the house with the midwives today. And they emailed me on like Monday or Tuesday and told me that they got, um, updated regulations for their stuff and that they um, can no longer do home visits unless I'm actually in labor. Like obviously I'm doing a home birth and they're the home birth midwives so they can come here when I'm in labor but the rest of their appointments have to be either televisits or um, I had to go to them. So uh, yeah, I was like, okay, well obviously things are still very serious and they're still adding more and more regulations. Um, and then the other thing that happened this week was Erica told me on, I think, also like Tuesday or Wednesday, Erica, my doula that lives in Wisconsin, who was planning on flying here for the birth, that uh, her flight, she just got an email saying that her flight had been canceled. Um, just completely canceled and no like, here's how you rebook or anything like that, just sorry. So um, we're st that's all still up in the air. She's still deciding, you know, if she's gonna be able to make it. Um, she still wants to look into it. I know it means a lot to both of us. Um, for her to come, but we'll see. And so those, both of those things were a little bit upsetting, but um, I do feel like I'm in a good space now where um, I just, everything kind of happened so fast in the beginning and now it's just to the point where I just feel like I have to kind of roll with it. Um, so yeah, I, and maybe it's just because the sun is out this week that it feels less sad. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, if you missed last week's episode, I accidentally said the baby's name in one of the uh, selfie videos that I shot for the vlog, and we left it in there, and it turned into like an Easter egg situation. So, officially the baby's name is Banner. His name is Banner Luis Alcaraz. Uh, Banner is a Scottish name. Knox is also a Scottish name. I come from Scottish descent, um, not 100%, but a, a good portion. And so it's my contribution to his name where Luis is his middle name, which is actually Julian's first name. And Alcaraz obviously is our last name, but originally Julian. So the first name gets to be Scottish. And uh, Banner is just a name that I found randomly and we're really excited about it. It's very unique, um, but it's not weird. I don't think it's like a weird name where he's always gonna have to explain how to spell it and all that kind of stuff, so. Um, yeah, Knox, man, I mean, as much as I feel like he completely gets it 100% that he's in there, he's coming out. Like this morning he was like, come out, Banner, time to come out, and he talks to him, and um, I haven't, necessarily talk to him a lot about that he's gonna come out here at the house. That's probably something I should do. Um, that, yeah, that one, I have been talking to him because Knox loves birthdays. He loves making people cake for their birthdays. He loves singing happy birthday. He loves the candles, the everything. And so I have been talking to him about how Banner's birthday is coming soon. Banner's gonna, he's the next birthday. And you, you gotta make him a cake and you, we're gonna sing happy birthday Banner. And so I have been talking to him a lot about that. He, he's so funny, he thinks the entire remodel is Banner's room. So any of the new rooms, like this room, the school room, any of the new rooms, he'll be like, this Banner, it's for Banner. And I'm like, okay, no, it's for all of us. But um, 
yeah, I could, I could probably, I probably need to talk to him about like uh, it happening here and mama's gonna have um, baby Banner in the bathtub. He's so smart though, because I'll ask him, where is Banner right now? And he'll be like, in, in mama tummy. And I ask Knox, where did you come from? And he said, a tummy. So I, I mean, okay, we'll see. Well, uh, I'm really interested to see. And I hope that it's not the middle of the night when uh, Banner actually comes out. Um, Cause I would like for him to be either in there or in there right after to see like right away in the bathtub and the whole thing. Um, but obviously we can't control the time of day for that one. So one really special moment um, that I had this week. So I guess another thing that um, has been impacted by the stay at home orders and everything is the inability to have a baby shower. Um, and I guess I didn't really think about if I needed a baby shower anyway, because I have a, it's like, do you like have a bridal shower when you're like 40 years old and it's like your second or third marriage, you know, like, a, do you, I don't know. <laughs> so I didn't really know if like that was something that people do, but it is, a di I have a different group of people around me this time than I had with Knox. And, um, our staff wanted to do something, but we can't really get together in groups. Um, and that was kind of a bummer because I know that they had something planned and they had reached out to me like, hey, is it okay if a couple of us still do it? But I was really trying to like not be in groups too much. So um, the other day uh, was, I think it was yesterday, actually, Kim came over. So Kim is, for lack of a better term, like our office manager at Street Parking. And... Um, she delivered a video to me from Carolina, who is our street parking mom's coach. And in this video, uh, Carolina said that um, she wanted to do this for me. It's something that she had done in her pregnancy um, last year, where all of the women who are typically at like the bridal shower or whatever you want to call it, do this like little blessing and they tie, each of them tie a, the string around their wrist um, without breaking it at all. So it's one big long chain of a string that shows that we're all together and that we're all here for you. And, um, and then each person keeps the string on their wrist until, um, there's two ways that I've heard of it, and, until the baby's born or even until after the fourth trimester, which is three months after the baby's born, because that three month period, I think sometimes, a lot of times people forget that that might be the gnarliest part of this whole thing, is like adapting to <clears throat> being a new mom, even if it's your second time. You are strong and you are totally wrapped up in love. Wishing you strength and peace. You are strong, you are capable, and you are not alone. Sending you love and wishes for a peaceful birth for baby B. I pray that joy trumps any fear or anxiety that you might face in the next couple weeks. Hey Miranda, sending you strength, power, and all my love. Push! You were made to do hard things. You've got this, Miranda. Miranda, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And you are so strong and so loved. You got this. My daily prayer for you is that you may feel the peace of a thousand angels as you exhale on our first creation. Yeah, they, what they had done because we couldn't do it in person is she had reached out to a bunch of the moms that work for us or in the street parking community and had made this beautiful video of all of them putting a string around their wrist and just saying a little message to me. It was like a, you know, 15, 30 second message from each of them. And I just sat there and watched it and all of them saying, we're here for you. Like we're supporting you. I'm going to wear this until, you know, baby B comes or I'm going to wear this. And I was just like, it was so special and so meaningful. I was just crying my eyes out. And I remember Carolina had some friends do that for her in LA um, before her birth. And I thought it was so awesome because she told us, or she did like an Instagram post about how even during the birth, she would look down at her string and remember like all the other people who were wearing a string thinking about her. 
Um, and so I have this on and they all have their strings on. And at the very end of the video, uh, Knox, you, <laughs> Knox came on and Julian was like over in the corner here in the office filming me watching this. I'm here. You'll be okay. And be okay. Yeah, you mama. And Knox just came on in his video. He was with Lucy, Julian's mom, and he was like, I'm here. And he's like, you'll be okay. And I was just sobbing. I look over and Julian's crying. And it was just um, really special. It was a, like a really great thing that they did to make me feel supported, even though no one's going to be able to visit me right after. No one can bring food or you know presents or anything like that um so it can feel alone for all these moms that are going through this right now where normally you would have just everyone like you know trying to be in person supporting um so yeah i mean even my own mom like i don't know when my parents are going to meet this baby because they live in another state and travel is weird and they're older and um they have my sister-in-law is due to give birth I think the, the day before me is when they'll induce her. The day before my due date. Um, and they won't even be, she lives there, in the, but they can't visit because they will have just been in the hospital. Anyways, the support that I felt through that and just them taking the time to do it, even though we couldn't do anything in person was really special and it meant a lot. Um, one thing that I still have yet to do is like, I have all of these. So having a home birth requires a lot of supplies. I, apparently, I mean, it makes sense. You're not at the hospital. So, um, and I guess instead of them just bringing so much stuff to your house when they show up, I ordered this box from a company called Radiant Belly, um, that sent all of the like medical supplies, um, not like tools or anything like that, but it's, I thought it was gonna be a little more exciting when I opened it and I opened it and I'm not kidding. It's literally like a certain number of trash bags and like um, a roll of a specific type of um, paper towels and like gloves and um, chucks pads, you know, to put on the bed for like blood and stuff like that. Uh, there's a cord clamp in there, like a plastic cord clamp and some like cleaning wipes and stuff like that. So. I was gonna show it on the vlog, but it's very, um, it's just what you would expect to see in a hospital, but they sent it in this package that's exactly the amount that the midwives that I'm working with feel like they need for the birth. Um, but then scattered all around in different Amazon boxes are like some other random things. Like uh, I ordered a waterproof sheet for my bed. Two reasons. One, if I end up wanting to lay in my bed while I'm in labor, there are just, fluids that come out. But also if I, my water breaks while I'm asleep in the middle of the night, we just got a new mattress. Like it's two days old up there. And so we put the waterproof sheet on and then our regular sheet on top of it so that I don't ruin our brand new mattress if that happens. Um, but yeah, I've, I've ordered some more like random things that I've got to like get and the, and the vlog that we did like a month ago or whatever it was that I've got to definitely organize and gather in one place. Cause right now, if you were like, oh, we need this thing. It's like randomly in some Amazon box somewhere in our house. So I could be more organized. And now at 38 weeks, I probably should be. Everything's going good. Um, definitely been a lot more positive this week. We had a few nights with Knox where he didn't sleep at all. And Julian and I have had to talk about like, this is just Knox, it's how he is. It's not gonna change in the next two weeks. He's not miraculously gonna become a sleeper. So, I mean, we had to, Julian and I are very, um, even when we've been in like big fights and things like that, we're very good about always sleeping in the same bed. Um, but in this situation for the first few weeks, we had to like be realistic, like, if Knox is waking up twice a night and Banner's waking up four times a night, neither one of us are gonna sleep at all. So we like already agreed like, hey, it's okay. Like if we need to separate for a few weeks or if we need to get your mom to come sleep here and she solely deals with Knox for a few nights or something because just no sleep at all with 
when we just had Knox was one thing, but when you have Knox and the new baby, I mean, it would just be a disaster. We would be so cranky and just not able to function. So some of the talks that we've started having to like be realistic and I'm glad that at this time we're further along in our relationship where we don't like take that stuff as personal as we did the first time. Um, so it's good. All right, so home stretch, we are in it. Next week could be just a normal vlog episode or it could be the debut of Banner Luis. Who knows? Stay tuned. We'll see you.